If you love space then you are probably excited for the first orbital flight of SpaceX's Starship, which will happen in March or possibly later. Another impressive launch of Falcon Heavy is scheduled for April 8th, sending Viasat 3, the first of three high-capacity geostationary orbit satellites for Viasat. The satellite has finished construction and testing after a long, difficult process according to Viasat. The Viasat 3 Ka band satellite class is expected to provide much better service speed and flexibility than other satellite platforms. The first two satellites will focus on the Americas and Europe, Middle East, Africa, while the third satellite will cover the Asia-Pacific region to complete Viasat's worldwide coverage. Each Viasat 3 satellite is expected to provide over 1 terabit per second of network capacity and be highly flexible to direct capacity where it's needed. The FCC filing for the Viasat 3 Falcon Heavy launch states that the Falcon Heavy will be completely used up, with the center core and side boosters all being discarded and landing in water. This means that B1068, 10528, and B10533 will be retired. B1052 and B1053 are currently the oldest boosters in the fleet, and they use an older design inner stage of which only one is remaining. Interestingly, the inner stage 4 of B1052 came from B1049, which is quite a legacy. Therefore, they can't use both of them simultaneously as a Falcon 9. Falcon Heavy weighs approximately 1,420 tons and generates over 2,300 tons of thrust. In a completely expendable setup, it can launch 267 tons to an elliptical geostationary transfer orbit and 638 tons to low Earth orbit. While SpaceX does not publicize its direct-to-geo abilities, Falcon Heavy is no longer the most powerful rocket on the market. NASA's Space Launch System now holds the title, having made its inaugural launch on November 16, when it sent an uncrewed Orion capsule towards the moon on the Artemis 1 mission. This monster rocket is undoubtedly an engineering marvel that even shocked NASA scientists when it was first envisioned in 2010. NASA's SLS was expected to be the biggest and most powerful rocket globally, as well as being very affordable and quick to build due to the use of existing components such as engines and boosters from the Space Shuttle program. At the time, the Starship was only a concept, and the Falcon Heavy was SpaceX's first attempt at a heavy orbital vehicle, with a payload capacity roughly comparable to the SLS. In 2014, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden made a statement that has been mocked and criticized ever since. Let's be honest, we don't have a heavy lift vehicle available for commercial use. The Falcon 9 Heavy may come about someday, but it's currently only in the planning stages. The SLS is a reality. In 2016, Bolden still believed that commercial companies were not up to the task. Ironically, SpaceX beat NASA and SLS prime contractor Boeing and Falcon Heavy was launched in 2018. However, it wasn't until four years later that the SLS took off, and it cost a staggering 238 billion US dollars. Since then, a lot has changed. Bolden seems to have changed his mind. In a 2020 interview with Politico's Space Newsletter, Bolden was asked what might happen in the next four years. SLS will go away, he said. It could happen during a Biden or Trump administration, because eventually commercial entities will catch up. They will build a heavy lift launch vehicle, similar to the SLS, that they will be able to fly much more cheaply than NASA can with the SLS. That's just the way it goes. Bolden is still a prominent and influential voice in the space community, but he no longer has direct control over U.S. space policy. Perhaps no longer having to answer to Congress for NASA's budgets has allowed him to speak more freely. In any case, his comments reflect the overall opinion in the space community, at least outside of traditional contractors like Boeing and Northrop Grumman, who directly benefit from SLS development, that the SLS rocket will eventually become obsolete. When Congress came up with the idea for the Space Launch System rocket in 2010 and directed NASA to build it, they made two assumptions. Firstly, they assumed that new space companies like SpaceX would not succeed, which was reasonable at the time as SpaceX had lost most of the rockets it had attempted to launch into space. Secondly, they assumed that traditional companies like Boeing would be better at building large rockets. However, both of these assumptions turned out to be incorrect. In addition, NASA's scientists were taken aback by the launch of the SpaceX Falcon Heavy due to its remarkably low cost. A comparison of the costs between the Falcon Heavy and NASA's SLS reveals a significant disparity, demonstrating that commercial development of large rockets is likely to shape the future of the industry. It is true that NASA's SLS will have greater lifting capacity than the Falcon Heavy, 70 tons versus 64, 
and a larger fairing that can accommodate a wider range of payloads. It will also have a more capable upper stage that can send larger payloads further into space. However, these enhancements come at an incredibly high cost. For example, NASA spends approximately $3 billion each year to develop the SLS rocket and its ground launch systems at Kennedy Space Center. Although the SLS was scheduled to launch in 2017, the maiden flight of the SLS booster was postponed until 2022, which is not unusual for large aerospace rockets. Nevertheless, the cost of this three-year delay is about $12 billion. Let's compare the cost of this three-year delay with the lift capability NASA could have obtained by purchasing Falcon Heavy rockets from SpaceX. The $10 billion could pay for 110 launches of the reusable Falcon Heavy or 67 of the disposable version providing up to 3,800 tons of lift. This is equivalent to 10 international space stations or an incredible lunar base. Clearly, NASA doesn't require that many launches, but it could purchase a few Falcon Heavy rockets every year and allocate the funds to construct significant payloads to launch on them. Practically speaking, NASA hasn't paid anything for the development of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Actually, by renting its unused launch complex 39A to SpaceX for Falcon Heavy launches, the space agency has claimed it has saved around $1 million in yearly upkeep expenses on the historic launch complex. The real question is why would the government persist in spending billions of dollars annually of taxpayer money for a rocket that will be unneeded and outdated? Lori Garver, a former NASA deputy administrator from 2009 to 2013, said, If the U.S. continues this travesty, it will siphon off even more funds NASA could otherwise use for science missions, transfer vehicles, or landers that actually get us somewhere. That ends today's video. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching.